Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Kennedy Center. This is the Millennium Stage, our daily free performance series brought to you every single evening of the week by our friends at Target. We are here at 6 p.m., 365 evenings a year to present the best in music, dance, theater, and more. If there's a performance that you'd like to see but you can't make it in person, please join us online where we broadcast each night's performance live. You can log on to www.kennedy-center.org to watch the live webcast. And you can also check out thousands of past performances in our broadcast archive. All right, without further ado, won't you please join me in welcoming to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Doug Levitt. Good evening. You see, I Enough of this living rough and I found the truth is how I know it's what I County. I can do all the snow day school closings if you'd like. <laughs> well, welcome to this uh, hometown edition of the Greyhound Diaries. Uh, seven years and 70,000 miles back, I set out on what I thought would be my first and last six week tour by Greyhound. I mean, I think six weeks is enough to get you committed in most states. <laughs> but inspired by WPA era projects that drew a fuller portrait of America, I began writing songs and stories inspired by folks I've met along the way, many struggling to get by. But the reason we think we do things and the reason we actually do them aren't always exactly the same. 
But there's no way to know that at the beginning, which started like this. Roll call. Too loud through the speakers above me, I hear. No mace, no pepper spray, no inappropriate behavior, no intoxication of any kind. She's part bus driver, part prison guard, and we're pulling out of Kelso, which is either in Oregon or Washington. Let's do a roll call. There's the woman telling her, the weathered blonde telling her seatmate, then my daughter said, if I have to save every nickel I make, I'm gonna rent you a car. There's the Korean War Navy vet comparing battle cries with two newly minted Marines. There's the guy in full-fledged denim. There's the guy in the Scarface bomber jacket with the words power and money embroidered on the sleeve and uh, Al Pacino <laughs> embroidered on the back. A smattering of other American types and me, the former foreign correspondent turned artist, downwardly mobile artist. In lieu of plans or funding, I have mostly questions. Among these, in this time of transition for so many, how do we reconcile dreams and actualities? Confront loss while at the same time reimagining the future? Are there, would one American story tell us something about our common American story? And then, how the hell did I end up adrift on a Greyhound in my early 30s? <laughs> And the bus rumbles to life, and the driver shuts off the inside lights. And for the first time, we see the expansive beauty of the road under moonlight, through long bays of picture windows that spread out beside us like moving murals. The story goes and then it's gone the moment see you took too long. The story goes and then it's gone the moment see you took too long. We hadn't screens on cell phones, magazines and microphones. Paper falls, ticker tapes hanging on the fire escape. So ask me up, baby, tell me, Joe. Laugh if you are going broke away tonight. The street lamp hums and the neighbors fight. Betty is a working girl, lonely in the only world she's ever known. Her baby's got another call, the other's crying down the hall. But the senators and actors, painting is a fake. I am just a killer who's always on the table. Neighbors fight, the manhole sings, the poet dies, the cell phone rings, the baby cries, can't you hear?
goes and then it's gone the moment see you took too Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. It is, um, it is great to be here at the uh, John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. Uh, this spectacular monument to his legacy as a supporter of the arts. Uh, President Kennedy also has a somewhat lesser known legacy uh, he helped me lose my sixth grade student council election. <laughs> um, my handler's dad uh, crafted my speech, which I loved. And so I stood before my elementary school, Merch Elementary. Um, that's a shout out to Merch Elementary, <laughs> of all things. <laughs> yeah, Merch! And... <laughs> And so I stood before everyone, and in a, uh, a tone befitting my 11 years, I said, Ms. Thornton, teachers, fellow students, more than 20 years ago, the first president of our country to be born in the 20th century, President John F. Kennedy said, the torch of liberty has been passed to a new generation of Americans. We are that generation. <laughs> Elementary school. <laughs> um, the, the laughter would have been good. I mean, it was, it was just befuddlement. Everyone was like, um, and I started sweating in my clip-on tie and my note cards and everything, and it was only going to get worse because this is actually sort of a parable of Washington. My opponent gets up, no note cards, no nothing, just says, how you like McDonald's for lunch? <laughs> The place went off. I mean, high fives, chairs flying, and that was just the teachers. <laughs> we almost needed security, and then it finally died down, and he said, how'd you like video games in the lunchroom? Again, pandemonium. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I peaked at age 10, no big deal. <laughs> he said, and then he said, I, I don't know if I can get that for you, but I'll be a good president. <laughs> He got a standing ovation. <laughs> the teachers tried to claim it was a squeaker, but um, I knew better, you know. Know your audience and everything. Let me introduce you to my cohorts this evening. Melissa Christopher on vocals, background vocals. <laughs> Rachel Beauregard also on beautiful background vocals. Mr. Mark Williams on guitar products. Mr. Ben Tufts. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Patrick Thornton. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm done. No, I'm not done. <laughs> we share our stories more often in transit as we travel the roads and skies next to total strangers. When you travel by bus, this can be a lot of time because the trip between two cities in a single state can take as long as a transatlantic flight, except with meal stops at Wendy's. But it's not just passing time, this sharing of our stories. I've come to see it as a kind of ritual that takes place up and down the aisles. Our stories are where we meet. They're the crossroads of human experience, as I've felt time and again, like the night I met Private Simmons. Chill bumps. Now my daddy didn't mess, the reservist next to me said on an overnight across Kansas. He was backwoods. One time I tried to hit him on the porch. Next thing you know, I was off the porch and coming too. He said, boy, if you're dumb enough to swing at your daddy, I will kill you. <laughs> but when I came back from Iraq, it was like I'd become somebody. All these people who thought I wouldn't amount to nothing. My granddaddy said, boy, you'll be in prison by the time you turn 15. When people looked at me different, it changed me. When we flew back from Iraq, we flew into Fort Hood and then back to Arkansas. We thought our families would be there. But we pulled into the stadium, and I swear 
All of Arkansas was there. I mean, it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. I'll tell my grandkids about it. I'll never have nothing like that. We had rehearsed to get out in a single line, but when they said we was relieved, we all started running to the stands where our families was. And I jumped as high as I could to get over this wall, but fell short. And then all I remember was this big arm lifting me up. It was my daddy. Now, growing up, my daddy never cried, told me he loved me, nothing like that. It just wasn't his way being backwoods and all. But he put me in his arms, and he said, Today, I'm the most proudest man in the world, and I love you. I felt 10 foot tall and bulletproof that day. I still get chill bumps thinking about it. We share our stories to know we're not alone. I know this is true in my case. When I was little, my dad would grab the letter opener and I'd grab the candlestick holder and together with the record in the background, we'd sing songs like, okay, you don't bring me flowers. I can, I mean, I don't mind sharing that with you. I did the Streisand part. <laughs> you know, my voice hadn't changed yet ill-equipped to talk about feelings. Music was how we communicated. I'm the stolen moment. I'm the waking age. I'm the sound of one heart break. King. Wide awake and half asleep You are the company you keep I don't keep much of anything these days But these cars sound like the ocean I'm sure I can hear the ocean shine like the sun, shine like the moon, shine like a star that dies too soon. On a cold grayscale morning, the world that I thought to be permanent and real turned out to be anything but. He was there resting, resting at the base of a tree on the side of the house. There was no other explanation. You know, there were no airplanes in ancient Troy. The World Trade Center doesn't crumble and dads don't die. Certainly not from self-inflicted gunshot wounds. Life can only be understood backwards, my dad's friend said, opening his eulogy. He went on to tell about my dad's life, uh, growing up in the Bronx, moving to DC, excitedly meeting this charismatic Texan Carol, the kids. Life can only be understood backwards, he said at the end, quoting a philosopher. The problem is, it must be lived forwards. And we may not understand this day for a long time, or ever, but maybe, maybe, in the warm light of retrospect, it'll make more sense. And it does. For one, I wouldn't be the person I am. I certainly wouldn't be an artist. 
and I wouldn't be on this bus, which despite most material evidence to the contrary, is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Still these cars sound like the ocean. I'm sure I can hear the ocean shine like the sun. TMI or what? I mean, <laughs> are you here on the guitar, by the way? You are? Um, roll call continuing. There's the guy with the shirt that says, does I look like someone who freaking cares? Apparently not. There's the bus driver rolling out some new material. <laughs> People with a Nextel phone don't put it in walkie-talkie mode. This time of night, people trying to rest. We know you are a busy person. <laughs> if there's some static, bring it to me and I'll rectify the situation. If you get off and do drugs, don't be acting all outrageous, leaning up on nobody. This ain't no hotel, motel, holiday in express. <laughs> One of the themes that comes up time and again on the road is longing and belonging. Wanda is, has been running the Chico station in California for 13 years through three kids, a failing marriage, and now custody of her three grandchildren. I envy you, she said. I'm stuck between here and Reading. Sometimes I think my handwriting has traveled the country. You know, when we had handwritten tickets. But I'm stuck here. I want to get a 60-day Ameripass and travel wherever I want to go. And if I like a guy, stop off in a town, whatever. This town is everywhere That I don't need to be Fixing fenders under satellites Down here in nowhere, Tennessee shoots in 
Thank you very much. I'll fix you right up, Gina's story. I was traveling east to spend Thanksgiving with my family I'd gotten on in Nashville. Gina was sitting next to me coughing, so I offered her an airborne. How she ended up in Nashville, her life unraveled in her mid-60s, she told me as we rode through the Tennessee rain on I-40 at dusk, the windows fogging over. Gina had raised her two daughters alone in Knoxville, working for the Department of Energy. She'd w rush home to make dinner at night, saving up enough money to help her daughters go to school and to buy a home. And then in her 60s, after she retired, she said, I fell into an awful depression. She said, I never felt anything like it. I was I was knocked out completely. My doors, sit, windows, curtains stayed shut for weeks. The only person I saw regular was the gardener. Seeing how I was, he said, have you ever tried any medication like cocaine or crack? She said, you're crazy. I would never and never have and never would. To. But as the days and weeks went on, the pain got worse. And then she said, one day, I don't know what happened. I just said, I don't even know how to do it or how much it costs. And he said, don't worry, I'll fix you right up. He sure did, she said, letting out a nervous laugh. He fixed me right up. In that moment, I started to lose everything. All these hoodlums started hanging around my house. I lost my house. My daughters, who had gotten suspicious from afar, 
had heard from the neighbors that the police were coming by. And my daughters, they saved me. They didn't judge me at all. They just got me into this amazing program in New Orleans. Where after, she realized that she needed to stay in an ongoing program. She since became a supervisor. She said, it's amazing. It turns out I'm good at it. I said, how did this work compare to other work that you've done? She said, it's the most fulfilling thing I've ever done work-wise. I never thought that my life would unravel like this in my 60s. But I'm where I need to be. I realized I can help others. <laughs> Song over, song over. You don't, don't modulate your songs. Don't take it about a half step. It's very confusing. There's a flip side, flip side to that. Some things are unresolvable, and you have guilt that won't come up for air, and that's the flip side of that other song.
sometimes is a long time when you're waiting on the train and your flat broke and your clothes so and you're stuck out in the rain how will you know why I'm waiting how will you ever find me cause I'm down on my knees begging please Got the shakes and the earthquakes coming apart at the seams. When you get there, it's never there, it's always in between. How will you know I am waiting? How will you ever find me? Cause I'm down on my knees Begging Please Steady as she goes, and she always goes that way. I give up, you got me. Have mercy on me. I give up, you got me. Have mercy on me. That was me asking my doctor for antidepressants, so. <laughs> what I realized is that the reason we think we do things and the reason we actually do them aren't exactly the same. In some ways, I thought by sharing my story with others, it would help them share their stories with me. But at the same time, the opposite was true. I am trying, on some level, to give voice to others' stories. Realize that others have given voice to my story. One night I met uh, a trucker named Hector. Uh, he was across the aisle reading a book called Debt, Middle Aged. Uh, faded tattoos, one of a panther, the other um, he said uh, it was supposed to be a butterfly, but his son said it looked like a snail. He was going to pick up tractors uh, to take them up uh, in, for sugar beet season, to take them up north for tomato season. He said agriculture trucking is the bottom of the ladder, but with my knee problems and my back problems, it's what I can do. But he had a pain in his side. He said too much hard living. And, but what he meant is that living got harder. When he was living in Oakland, his son was 11. He had gone out to the store, left his son with his wife. They were watching TV. And when he came back, 
the neighbor said something happened to your son. Turns out there was a carjacking and one car was chasing another. His son went to the window and was shot. He said, I blame myself. Why were we in that neighborhood? His son had to start over. He started with baby sounds, but he ended up graduating high school with special help. And we were sitting under a marquee in El Centro, New Mexico, uh, at sundown. And I said to him, you need to forgive yourself. And he said, you, you need to forgive yourself. And in that moment, I really did. There's one core principle that exists in every form of music the world over. In other words, it's the most universal concept in the most universal form of human communication. It's called the resolve or the resolution. Basically, you have a root. And then the song travels through other chords, some sad, some wistful, returning home. But it's not the same anymore. It's a different place for having traveled that length of the song. All right, let's lighten this up real quick. So, <laughs> God, depresso. <laughs> this is great therapy. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so this is going to be a, uh, I, don't get scared, it's going to be an audience participation kind of situation. This is something else I've sort of learned. Um, and it's called the sights, the smells, the shows, the tells. A little window into the world of Greyhound. So your job is to do sights, smells, shows, tells. Now I know they're very educated people in Washington. Um, I think everybody should be able to do this. So uh, let me show you how it's done, okay? I got the sights, the smells, the shows, the tales. I can take you there easy, so I might as well. Okay, can, can you guys try it with me? Don't be scared. <laughs> I got the sights, the smells, the shows, the tales. I can take you there easy, so I might as well. That's actually really good. Let's lift it up one more time. <laughs> I got the sights, the smells, the shows, the tales. I can take you there easy, so I might as well. Okay, you guys ready? Ready? Here we go. We're going to start with it. I got the sights, the smells, the shows, the tales.
said as though he was a fact. Had a point, but then Samuel Jackson on crack. Tried to bust into the front of the line, and I had to question that. I said, um, excuse me, are you not into lines as like a political thing or what? I got a little bit concerned when I looked back on the bus and Sam Jackson on crack was sitting by the back making a fuss. So I said, I didn't mean any disrespect by that at all. And he said, no, you step two, I got mad respect for you. So I got the respect of Samuel Jackson on crack. It's enough to make you want to never, ever look back. And here is the end, and it ends in a riddle. You think that you'd want to? Sit in the middle, but the middle's where the windy smell collects after a rest stop. Here we go. I got the sun. Thank you so much. This is our last song. <laughs> Not ever, but just, you know, right now. <laughs> That'd be very wrong. Um, I want to say thank you again to my uh, collaborators up here. Uh, Melissa Christopher, Rachel Beauregard, Mark Williams, Ben Tufts, and uh, Patrick Norton. More or less. Thornton. <laughs> um, I also want to say a very special thank you. Well, first, let me say thank you to the Kennedy Center for uh, this opportunity. It's fantastic to be here. And I want to say a very special thank you to my mother, um, Carol Schwartz, uh, who from whom I've learned uh, everything I would ever need to know really about community and civic engagement and social justice. And I really appreciate her so, so much. So thank you very much. Can you guys give my mom a, a round of applause for giving birth? And thank you so much. This is our last song.
tonight. Thank you. You were amazing.